the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment. It was in this same city that we were given a property in one of your most expensive places after a meeting like this brothers and sisters I don't say these things to boast the Bible says the things that we have seen the things that we have heard the things that our hands have handled of the word of life this is what we teach there is a reason the spirit of the Lord kept putting it in the heart of your pastor yesterday unanimously all of them agreed and said we must bring this revelation this is more than a financial seminar you have already had a financial seminar this present truth he that hath an ear he said let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches so number one he is lord of all number two it comes through men to you Please get this revelation. Men are important. Don't ignore men. But men are only important as conduits. Conduits. Are we together? Now, the third thing is what I want you to listen. Please listen. Listen. Please listen very carefully. You have to get this. The Bible says, if you are unfaithful in unrighteous mammon, are we together? It says, who shall commit to you? Then he calls something strange, true riches. What is it? Come, my friend. One other gentleman. No. Oh, and okay, yes, you come. Watch this. Hold my phone, sir. Please lift it up. Do you have some money? Let me give you some money. Watch this. Okay. You people are selfish. You are saying he should keep it and receive something. Now watch this. Lift it up, sir. Please don't be embarrassed. Lift it up. Now watch this. In our economy, this is called money, currency. Is that true? What is the assignment? To buy products and services, to buy conveniences and to help redeem time. This is the purpose of this. Do you agree with me? Every businessman will agree with me. Now watch this. When you want this phone, you should have this. So says our economy. Are we together? So if, you, if this man wants to buy this, he will exchange it for this. Are we together? Now, I want to show you that this too is a product. There is something that buys it. The name of what buys money is called true riches. It will sink now. Just listen very carefully. That means that money buys a phone. If I want a phone, what do I need? If I want money, what then buys money? You were told that this is capital, but I'm showing you that this is a product. There is a capital that buys it. The name of that capital is called true riches. There are seven of them. Oh dear. Tonight is a miracle service. <laughs> No, said no, we have to walk in the spirit of. I just have, I, 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 it's, don't, I'm the one preaching. Don't worry, I know when, where I will stop, and then we have to pray. Are we together? Everybody say, True riches. When the Lord opened my eyes to this, I put my hand on my head. 
You can be looking at this phone forever. Once you don't have this, it will remain like a museum. You will watch it and never get it. Like Moses looking at Canaan. You are seeing it. Honey is dripping. Milk is dripping. You can't partake of it. But this is the problem. And I'm showing you that in God's economy, it does not start here. There is another factor that buys this. So when you want to have this, you have to come to God to give you the capital that buys a product called money. There are seven of them. I will list only three. Yes. One. The first capital that buys money is called wisdom. Please write it down. The Bible says, by me, kings reign and princes decree justice. Talking about wisdom. It says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. All that love me will eat of me. The capital called wisdom. So if I want to make you rich, from God's way, if I give you this, it's the same thing as giving you a phone that can spoil. When this spoils, we say it has finished. Just like your phone spoils. Are we together now? So there must be a system of replenishing. You are not wealthy until you have the ability to replenish. If you are fruitful and cannot replenish, you may not beg, but you also not laugh. We're not talking of money for tea and bread. We're talking of transgenerational shifts. Is it making sense to you all that we've been making now? Wisdom. Number two. The second spiritual reality that the Bible calls true riches is called favor. Please listen, favor, that favor can buy money. Favor. Are you ready for the third? The third that the Bible calls true riches is called the gift of men. So when you say God make me wealthy, when you see a man coming, imagine an ATM. What is man? I say it this way. What is in man? What did you put in your ATM that makes you hide it? If I see the way you are protecting an ATM, I suspect that there's something sizable there. So what is in man that you are mindful of? Not the son of man that you, have, that you visit him. You have made him a little lower than Elohim. Crowned him with glory and and honor set him above the works of your hands what did you put in man that when a man shows up we should rejoice what is in men what is in a man that your pastor took out so much time to invite what is in men wealth is in men they can transfer it not by giving you money they can transfer it. One man's credibility can turn your life around. It is wealth. Listen very carefully. I told you I will give you three. Are we together now? Two riches. Should I give you one? No, I can't give you all. Are you ready for the fourth one? The fourth one is called the gift of a man. Not the gift of men. The value of a man. Capacity, skill is capital that buys money. Now listen very carefully. 
That's the one most people know. Four is okay. It's okay to make you a multi-millionaire. It's okay to change every course, every yoke. It doesn't matter from who. Let's review the true riches. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. The value. The gift of a man. Please let me have three, two more people. Come. It's not impartation. <laughs> two more people. Just come. We're rounding up. We have to work with time. There is a time we must not exceed tonight. In the name of Jesus. While you are sitting there, be praying for me. Now, all of you compress yourselves together. I like to use this illustration. Watch this. Call this the table of greatness. There is no space for you. Let me tell you in the name of honesty. Dreaming that there is a space waiting for you is just a psychological way of encouraging yourself. The reality in this life is that there is no space for any man. It's already vacant. But this is what the Bible says. The gift of a man will make room, make room for him. There's no space for you in Lagos. Every land has an owner. So what makes you think you have your own property? The gift of a man can make. Make rice for me. Rice is not there yet. But I can go to the market and combine some things. And make something that was not there to be there. The Bible says the factor responsible for that possibility is the value. A measure of your usefulness. May you never be so poor that all you have is this. I feel sorry for a man who has this. Watch this. Bring matches. Set this on fire. You cannot carry the ashes to your governor or to someone. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Leave it. Let, let the wind even push it so that you will really see what you are saying. Are we together now? That you can, someone can set this on fire. But imagine your little child playing with matches on your bundle of money and just sets it off and is laughing and he's saying Christmas tree and you come. Now watch this. And he sets 100,000 on fire rejoicing. Will you kill him? But do you have the ability to re- It is the ability to replenish that does not make us cry in dry season. Everybody who rose up in the kingdom, check their lives. This is what bought that. Is there any man so discreet and wise as thou art? Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped. I'm showing you how God helps men. So when you come to church, you are given wealth. I know that we have been trained that until I put my hand in my pocket and I bring this and you say thank you. I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. The Bible tells us that the word of God is able to make us wise. Doth not wisdom cry. Crying and say, oh simple ones, you lack this. You don't get it by getting this. Your job can only give you so much of this. Please believe me. If you receive 200,000 in Nigeria, people say you are doing well. Compared to what? Compared to the 12 relatives you have that have refused to be born again, I will not let you rest. You see them in your dreams. How much is their school fees? Compared to what? If you earn 200,000, everybody wants you to bless them at 200,000 rate. 20,000 is already gone for Titan. You, they know you earn 200,000. You can't earn 200,000 and give your parents 5,000. True riches. You're understanding the laws? That God 
is Lord over everything. So whatever he gives me, I am a steward and not an owner. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required that in stewards, a man be found faithful. Faithful. The reward for faithfulness according to scripture is more territory of influence spiritually. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou had been faithful over a few. I will now make you Lord over plenty. This is what we continue to seek every day. Please pick one and give me. This thing has relocated people from one region to the other. It does not have mouth, but it has power. This thing has determined who people marry. This thing has broken families. It has mended others. This thing has twisted messages. This thing has taken people to hell today. There are children that were not supposed to come that have come because of this. As, as little as it is, it's dangerous. It has done so many things. Change the character of people. A man who used to love his wife would just make 20 million and she would come and see her clothes in another home. And say, I just attended a seminar. They said, trust no one. From today, you are still my wife. We are not divorced. But just to let you know that that is your home. You stay with the children. It's all right. What shall it profit a man? If he gains this and loses his soul. Let me round up by showing you. I shared with pastor that the Lord revealed to me seven dimensions of wealth. I will only give you three too. Then we'll go into the miracle service. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. The other one, whoever carries it there, God bless you, eh? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Lay something for me, Mike. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. I'll just show you something I will pray. You are not wasting your time, I assure you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. I will see and I will rise intentionally by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do? Jesus, this is over your destiny and your finances. You're the name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change? Jesus. Sing it one more time and hear what you are singing. Creator of the universe. What can you do? What can't you do, Jesus? Listen, you're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. Why? Because the things that are seen are temporal. 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 Subject to change. My financial level, subject to change. My ministry level, subject to change. He said, but the things that are unseen, that if your result comes from the unseen realm, it cannot be changed. You are able, great and mighty God. 
You are able, Jesus. Sing it one more time. You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. Please sit down. I show you a mystery. Please just give me five minutes. I know our time is gone. Don't worry about the healing and all of that. In five minutes, we can wrap up that one. Impartation does not take forever. In one minute, one minute, you can receive something that can turn your life around. This is really the key. A key is a small object you can put in your pocket. But forget it and you will stand before a big door from morning till night. The Lord showed me seven dimensions of wealth that will come to the body of Christ. And that at this level, we are only in the third dimension. Dimension number one is called transactional wealth. For you to understand transactional wealth, you have to understand the natural laws of wealth. And there are three of them that support this. Please listen very carefully. Transactional wealth comes from the word transaction, exchange, exchange. Are we together now? It is suggestive that it is the kind of wealth that comes by selling products and services that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization. I choose my words carefully. Products and services that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization you can have what is worthy of commendation but not worthy of reward please listen let's talk a little finance now for you to understand this you have to know the law of value the law of value is a a representation you have to understand value value is a measure of your usefulness value is not just the skill you have it's a measure of your ability to provide solutions solutions that are needed and useful to the degree to which you can provide solutions to a territory you are termed valuable this is why preachers prosper they say men of God make money from nothing. No. They are providing solutions. It is supernatural in context. But it sustains an ability to transform people. It is needed. It is useful. The law of value. You have to be valuable. What do you have in your house? That's where the miracle will come from. Auxiliary laws that are supporting this first dimension of transactional wealth having value you have something to offer but it's not enough to be rewarded the second law that supports this listen carefully is called the law of productivity productivity is translating your value through refinement into products and services that are needed and useful your value in its raw state is worthy of commendation but not reward please listen very carefully are we together now? Yes. Products and services that are needed and useful. But even that in itself does not guarantee that you will be patronized. The same way you have a shop, you have this, you are productive, but you are still poor. The third law that supports transactional wealth is called the law of exchange. The mystery that connects you and those who need you is a law. Are we together? It is one thing to be productive. But it is another thing for men to be willing to come. And then to pay. This is why many people pray and say. I have everything they need. I'm a pharmacist. I have the drugs. I have everything. But no one is willing to come. There is a law 
that governs. It is at the point of exchange that the reward happens. Reward does not happen at the point of productivity. Reward does not happen even at the point of value. Until you get to the point of exchange, there is no reward. Transactional wealth. Are we there? The general rule is this. That our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to three things. Number one, the need or the demand for what we do. Number two, our ability to do what we do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing us. This is called the law of compensation in business. Are we together? That our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to three factors. One, the need or the demand for what we do. Number two, our ability, skill, proficiency, prowess in doing what we do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing us. You will be poor if you are easily replaceable. The degree to which it is difficult to find another you is the degree to which we cannot do without you. The second level of wealth is called transformational wealth. Transformation means change of state. At this level, you don't sell anything. You don't sell at this level. You give. It's a very costly thing because you are not rewarded immediately. Your giving must have a track record until the recipients of your value become transformed. So it's deceptive. It doesn't look like it can be a stream of income. For many years, you keep building people free of charge. This is why many pastors suddenly get to a threshold where in one month, blessings come. They didn't just start right from campus they paid someone school fees they preached they gave someone five naira for pure water they helped someone with ten thousand because they are not selling they are giving they are teaching and laboring and pouring their hearts a mentor raising a mentee pouring his heart not asking for anything in return when they become changed they become too grateful to leave you there is a law listen there is a law in the spirit that every time you dispense value, whether given or sold, you are authorized to be rewarded. So Mordecai saves King Ahasuerus from death and they archive it and don't, re don't reward him. And the law begins to kick in heaven. One night the king could not sleep and he said, bring me the chronicles. He opened it and said, what has been done to this man? Every time you have dissipated energy, time, and money to bless anyone, you made an investment. Wait for your returns. The financial market does not manipulate that one. Be patient. As surely as the Lord lives, it will come. Don't be angry with a man when you see God stepping in to bless him. There is a history to his benevolence. Transformational wealth. There are people today who are living off, they are lifting others. They have lifted too many people to be down. There are pastors that have raised too many people in the music ministry. They, they, they are, there's a history, there is a track record. If I fail lifting you up, you will lift me back up. That means if I subject myself to become a failure to lift you up, when you are there, the law makes sure that you will lift me up. My mother didn't seem to do well as it were in life. All to give us an opportunity to life. Our success has made high success. People go to my house and just part with cars sincerely. And sometimes people just get there and knock. Are you apostle's mother? Thank you. Thank you for giving birth to him. Open the gate. We have something for you. Who are you? Transformational wealth. What if she was angry when I would behave childish and killed me? You know how many souls she, has, she would have stopped from going to heaven? Transformational wealth. So when you see someone come down, kneels down and gives your pastor and his wife a hundred million, don't be angry. Find out the history. 
who did he change? And you see, the difference, oh dear, the difference is that transactional wealth is fixed. If I'm a billionaire, I will not buy one pure water 100 million just because I'm rich. The price is fixed. Pure water is pure water, correct? Even if it's in a hotel, you will just add pure water plus the money for the atmosphere. That makes, so it can't be more than that. Now watch this. If I'm a billionaire and I give you 1,000 for pure water, I expect change. Just because I'm rich, if I want you to go, but there should be change. But in transformational wealth, your reward is limited by the perception of the recipient of your value. Are we together now? That means that it is possible that the impact I produced in your life can be so much you think I am worth 10 million. So you will bless me according to your capacity and your perception of how far my value blessed you. This is why transformational wealth works like wildfire. In one month, a man can be given a house. You are not giving a house for selling something. You buy the value of it. It's powerful. And everybody can get into the realm of transformational wealth. The act of benevolence is an investment. Many greedy people have not lifted anybody to leverage on them. If you see many old people loitering around the street and you ask, even if they don't have children, they spend their lifetime. Who did they raise? God brought too many men. I told you wealth is in men. Hapa, you didn't bless anybody. You didn't advise anybody rising. You didn't pray for anybody. Assuming all your children are irresponsible. What of men? You had neighbors. They had children. Your, your, your children had friends. Everybody cannot be a failure. Men are like ATMs. They can't all fail at the same time. I teach you wisdom from the spirit. So while you are seeing all these little children, God bless you. Take 20 naira. The, all of this, there is a record in heaven. A day will come, someone will see you and say, you don't know me. But what did you say your name is? You say, John, this. He say, which, which one is that? He say, the father of this. Say, that black man that doesn't work very well. Come, you must be a manager. He say, sorry. He say, mm, I will explain to you later on. Your father did something to me in 1975. My tire patched and it was raining. I remember he could not walk well. And because of that thing, your prayer point of yes is answered in a minute. Two riches. Let me tell you this. If you are the one eating your money alone, I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But let me tell you sincerely, you will pay for it using your lifetime. This is not about being greedy or being this. He has dispersed abroad. His righteousness endures. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. But there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Poverty can be programmed. Listen to me. Our parents may not have been able to help us the way we ought to. But you can, you can make your child head boy before he arrives. There is something you do to everybody. Your, whether your child takes 16th position, he must be head boy and head girl. Your relevance and your contribution is too much. They will find who is close to you to reward you. And the interesting thing is that you can only change the future. You can't change history. So it cannot be manipulated. The record of your benevolence is there. There are men of God today who will never beg for bread. No. Their concern is never personal needs again for life. They have helped too many people and raised too many people to be hungry. Are we together? 
please, uh, there's something I want you to, with all pleasure, sir, I've been looking for a way of blessing you. When everybody forgets your name, your birthday, your absence does not make any effect. It's proof that your presence too did not make any effect. There are things that can be fair signs to show that you are transforming lives. Is God blessing us? The last level of wealth is called sovereign wealth. <laughs> sovereign wealth. Wealth by the finger of God. Wealth created by prophecy. There is a system in God's economy where he can veto the limitations of men. It is within his power. It's not a license to not be valuable. It's not a license to not transform. But it's part of what I taught yesterday called systems of advantage. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. Once upon a time, there was hunger in Samaria. Women were eating their children. Are we Bible students? Two women ate one child. They were about to eat the other child. And there was a contention. The other woman said no. And they brought anger. And the king tore his robe in anger. And when the issue got to Elisha, he came and said, By this time tomorrow. He was not suggesting. He was not revealing. He was creating. There is, there is the creative dimension of prophecy. Is the highest level of prophecy. You don't call names and numbers. You don't announce what would happen anyway. You make it happen. Please listen. Saul, the son of Kish left his father's donkey missing to go and look for it and after three days they wanted to return back and they went and made this strange system called samuel listen the moment saul saw samuel the donkey started going back home no prayer donkey that they tried to look for what you call loss is relative there is a grace that when you encounter a donkey for three days you could not find it but just meeting a man, the donkey started going back home. So it was never missing. The grace to send it back home was not there. That a thing can live your life today. You invested in a business that crashed. If I say, where is the money? You say it went, but it's still on earth. There is a voice that can send it back. Number two, he said when you are returning from here, you will find three men holding two loaves of bread. They bought bread to take home more for their children. But because you met a grace, he said they will salute you and two of them will give you. Did they buy the bread for you? No helper helps by default. Every helper has relatives who are in need. Whatever will make him leave them and help you must be divine. Are we together? Then he said, by this time tomorrow, and a foolish man made up his mind to say, even God would do. Ah. Was he there the last time God opened the heavens and bread came? food for angels was rained down and he said don't preserve any leave whatever spoils by the next day i will give again there is something about god we need to know it is true that we do not become lazy because of this that's why i showed you the progressions 
But there is a point in your life where things can fail. There is a day when your fishing will not bring fish. You are valuable. But that night, whatever happened to the fish, as usual, you could not catch anything. At that point, you need to know the sovereign wealth. Master, we have toiled all night. And he said, I know what you are looking for. Let me show you a dimension. Cast your net to the right side. God is about to change someone's life. Now sit down. The last scripture. And then we'll use 15 minutes to allow the Lord blow up this place. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. Tell you, I already sense a very strong presence of God here. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. Please project it for us. Outside, inside, make sure you follow it. Ezra chapter 6. Is it possible? Can we have it projected? Ezra 6, please. And verse 14. It's not possible. Okay, please turn, turn to your own Bible and let's read it. I want you to read it. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. Ah. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. If you are there, say amen. Let's read together. One, two, read. And prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And the men built it and they finished it. Stop there. That's all I'm looking for. It is one thing to build. It is another thing to prosper. It is another thing to finish. sovereign wealth there is such a thing as wealth from the mouth of God there is such a thing as a man's life changing overnight that you can be seated here and it is possible that tomorrow by this time you will be on your knees saying Lord I have heard that you lift men but which one is this it said when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream. Did you not call here Zion? In Zion there can be captivity, no problem. But there is a God that can turn things around. Zion, lift up your voice in one minute and begin to pray. Turn again our captivity, O oh God, like the streams of the Negev. Pray, Shalabaradash. Ah, God is coming through for someone finally. Weeping and just for a night. But hear me, Zion, joy comes with the morning. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Listen. In 2007, I was in Port Harcourt. I loved the Lord, but things were not all right financially for me. I attended a prosperity convention in Christ's embassy. Listen carefully. 
I remember that night. Please, if you are here to submit your prayer request, just begin to submit it now. We are praying. I just want to share with you a story. And that night, it was evangelist Eddie Owase. And after he ministered, he challenged people to give, challenged people to sow. And by the next day, I remember the Lord gave me an instruction. I'm not challenging you to sow. I just want to show you something. I didn't have much. I carried everything plus my recharge card, my rechargeable. I placed everything, zipped my entire wealth in one bag. And by the next day, I carried it. I was on my way for that conference. It was in one of the model churches. I was outside at the overflow because I didn't know, want anyone. I just sat quietly, my thing outside. And after he finished preaching, the Holy Spirit decided to disgrace me. When people were sowing, people were sowing lands, sowing houses and all of that. The Holy Spirit told me, he said, don't move yet. I will tell you when to move. I stayed quietly. When everybody finished giving, he said, now you can go to the altar from outside. I held my bag and I was dragging it like a foolish man. And everybody was watching me. I was praying in the spirit, my eyes teary, because you cannot bless yourself. In this kingdom, you are lifted by another. I went to the altar and I dropped that bag. And I went back. I sat down outside. Immediately I sat down, the Lord spoke to me. He said, my son, you have entered wealth. Four days later, it was around this period, close to my birthday. A young man calls me in the morning, 6.10 in the morning. And says, please, is this Joshua Selman? I said, who are you? He said, please, just send me your account number. I said, no, no, no. These scammers, who are you? Because I don't even have much. What I have, you will not come and frustrate my destiny. Who are you? And then I sent him my account number. And what that gentleman sent at that level, ah no, it should let you know that there is a God. The second thing that happened was God connected me to a man who would later become a general in the army. That man fell in love with me. You look at us, you think we are gay. Sorry to use that expression. To a point he loved me like Jonathan and David. I remember I told him one time that I was traveling and he said he doesn't have much home, but I should manage 400,000. Ah! I said, oh God, let me not ever annoy this man in my life. Give me wisdom. Then the Lord gave me an instruction that very soon he was going to send me to Bishop David Oedeko in Skenan land. Now listen very carefully. Let me show you something. And that morning the Lord told me the seed that I will carry. I got up, took a flight on my way to Canaan land. Went and dropped the seed, did everything I would do. As I came out, the Lord, and now, remember I'm doing this as a man of God. You don't receive from a colleague. It's not a law in the spirit. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed. I went to him. I'm showing you how sovereign wealth works. The Holy Ghost told me, lay your hands on the ground. There. I laid my hands there. And he said, from tonight, you have entered the overflow anointing. The last of sovereign wealth. I've shared it in many places. You would have heard my story. I went to buy sugar cane. What did I go to buy? Sugar cane. And I met two strange women. Somehow I knew that these women were not humans. They looked like old mothers. They wanted to buy the sugar cane too. And I said, Mama, I'm your son. Let me help you and buy 
They said, no, 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 we have them on. You know, they were trying to remove their, this thing. They tie and tie it, tie it. And I said, save yourself that trouble. Let me just help you and pay for this thing. And they said, okay. Then I paid for the sugar cane for them. And you know how mothers bless. I don't know if it happens here. They will be talking till you disappear. They will be blessing and calling the names of your children's children. And the women began to bless me. Not more than 100 naira, sir. And I didn't hear what they told me. But one of the old, wretched, tattered looking mother looked at me and said, My son, forever walk upon gold. <laughs> This man standing before you is a product of many anointings. My life changed and Abraham met Melchizedek. I show you sovereign wealth and Melchizedek blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the most high, possessor. Can a man bless like that? Possessor of the heavens, and, the earth. and his life changed. Many of us are at a season right now where we are trusting God for a level of supplies that can redeem time so that you can have the time to face destiny. Please hear me. I know you have businesses. I know you are valuable. But in these few minutes, are so desired by your pastor, his wife, and the leaders that there is a level of sovereign wealth. Was it was there not a raven that came to feed the prophet at Bucherith? What are you turning to? Open the eyes of the light. There's no one like you. Hey. None like Sing that part again. That's the only part. What are you turning to? Say, what are you turning to? Stop. In God's economy, anything can be anything. Anything plus God is the answer he puts. Your weakness plus God can become your wealth. Your little shop plus God can become an estate. Once you introduce God in the equation, the answer is whatever he calls it. Is someone ready to pray now? The moment we are ready to pray, I will pray for the sick, pray for the request, speak over our lives, and then we are done. We will do the impartation. But there are two prayer points. Number one, Lord, change my financial state. Listen. And then number two, right from the conference, from Wednesday down, Lord, the grace and the mantle, the unction that must rest on my life in this season, let it come. My heart is open. Someone is praying here. Someone outside is crying to the God of heaven, the maker of men. Please make sure you submit your requests. Alabaratos cabra de gede baladabash. Ente salas cabra de soda baladabalanaba. Let that grace, oh God, come upon my life. Give me wisdom. Give me favor. Connect me with helpers. Hallelujah. Now look up. You are about to receive now. Listen. Please listen. Listen. There was a young lady in the Bible called Hadassah. Listen carefully. 
Hadassah was a young poor girl who was kept and mentored by a man called Mordecai. Are we together? Vashti is banished out of the palace and the king is looking for a wife. So many ladies are called to go and meet the king. And Mordecai inspires Esther to go and try her luck. Watch this. Because what was on her is what is coming on you. Listen. Please listen to me. I want you to be sensitive, please. What is on you is what controls what is around you. Please listen to me. I can know what is on you by what I see around you. Thou anointest my head with oil, but what shows is my cup. He does not anoint your cup. When he wants your cup to overflow, it is your head for your cup to show. You are anointed. Please listen to me. There was a grace upon that young girl. Let me show you how the grace works. Please listen. The grace works by sight. That means for the grace to work, the eyes must see you. But once the eye sees you, it must bless you. This is how the grace works. Esther chapter 2, oh boy, and verse 15. The end part of Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 says that Haggai, the keeper of the virgins of the king, that she found favor in his sight and the sight of everyone who looked at her. Once you made contact with Esther, you will never pass free. No, something must draw you to be interested in her life. Please understand the grace that is coming on you. There is a grace. These bodies are only executors of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. Let me show you how the grace works. Verse 17 says, And Esther was loved by the king above all the virgins, and she obtained favor. He made her queen. The moment the king saw, the only person that can be exempted from blessing you when you receive this grace is a blind man. But once they can see, Come again, my brother. Now watch this. Let me illustrate. You stand here. Another person, come. Come, please, quickly. Our time is gone. You stand there. Everybody watch. Now continue to walk slowly. Pass yourselves and keep coming. Are we together? This man is your helper. He's in Lagos, but nothing is on you. Turn. You keep praying. Lord, change my life. This is your helper. He's within your vicinity. But nobody helps like that. Keep going. There is a grace. Watch this. Watch this. Keep going. This guy can give you anything you want. Remember from God through man. This is the man. But there is nothing on you that calls him. Watch this. Then you come for this conference. And you just thought you were sitting. Watch this. Something comes on your life. Watch this now. Listen very carefully. Now watch slowly. When you get there, don't pass yourselves. Now, it happened last week. And it should repeat itself again. Except for this conference. Now, two of you are going. Pass. This starts calling him. And he stops. It's impossible for him to pass. Because something has come upon you. You call this favor. You call this connection. I show you the technology. Men don't just come. There is an unction that calls them. Listen to me. Listen to me. This anointing creation has never been disobedient they were trained to only obey a voice and if that is not the voice that calls they don't obey Lagos has riches 
it is the wrong voice that has been calling that's why it has not come did the prophets not say oh earth hear oh earth hear it says as for the earth out of it comes bread even the king is fed by what is in the field listen please hear me when I found this grace and it came upon my life my life changed if you look at me and something in you will push you to bless me something in you will push you to support what I represent this is a major secret behind the shift in my life and in the ministry I came with all my heart if this is all you receive you can go back rejoicing listen you can go back and meet the same landlord that was treating you harsh over a house and looks at you and says how are you sit down and you are tempted to say is he interested in me just remember the conference thou anointest my head with oil I know you have a restaurant it's one thing to cook it's another thing for someone to come you have exhausted your mind and its intellect you will need a realm that is higher than the realm of men is someone ready to receive father release upon my life the Esther anointing please pray please pray you are a man of God here yeah, pray you need it for your ministry the power that compels favor by sight Jehovah Jireh my provider your grace is sufficient for me Jehovah Jireh my provider your grace is sufficient for me my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory you have put your angels charge over me Jehovah Jireh cares for me Jehovah Jireh cares for me Hallelujah in the name that is above all names I stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic and in the name of Jesus inside outside I decree right now upon your head and upon your destiny let this grace rest on you now let this grace rest on you now businessmen receive the Esther anointing career people receive the Esther anointing hallelujah hear me and God is able to make all grace how many you can have some graces like you can have some keys Help those under the anointing, please. All grace. Every door in this Lagos that should open for you in this season, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I declare, Efata, may that door be opened now. Be opened now. Hear me? Let's handle difficult situations now. The heart of a king is in the hands of the Lord. And like the waves of the sea, that means he can say no yesterday and say yes tomorrow. I declare, everyone who is a gatekeeper, holding the keys to where you need to go, 
I turn their hearts towards your favor. Hear me. Every destiny helper that must arise from Lagos or any part of the world. Wherever they are, for as long as their feet is making contact with the earth, I decree and declare between now and the end of July, by prophecy, I call them to appear in your destiny. Appear in your destiny. for every dying business struggling business in the name of the God of Jeshuron the one that rides upon the wings of the wind I decree and declare life to your dying business Anyone called jobless here? He said, Why sittest thou idle? He said, No man employers. When he spoke, there was a place for them. I decree and declare by the power of the highest, the God who is the maker of men gives you jobs that will surprise you. Every yoke of hardship planted in any family responsible for transgenerational hardship in the name of Jesus it ends this night and it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be removed from your shoulder the yoke from thy neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Let me pray. Hear me. If you are standing here under the sound of my voice. And you have been in the same position for more than one year. I stand by the God of heaven. Who anointed us to shift men. By the power of the prophetic. I shift you to another dimension. I shift you to another dimension. In the help them, please, my God. Help them, help them, my God. Ah, help them so they don't enjoy themselves. I shift you to another dimension. Have you ever had this proverb that a nation is born in one day? It says, but as soon as Zion travails, let me prophesy to you that what five years of your destiny should, could not bring, I stand by the power of prophecy and I decree, I don't know why I'm mentioning the number five, but I declare by the spirit in the next three months, 90 days, like the act of God, in the house of Obed Edom, let things turn around in your life. 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 you have helped before and has forgotten you like the wine presser Joseph pleaded with him and said when you meet Pharaoh tell him about me there are times that you have the gift but you do not have a voice at the gate you will need someone already at the gates to speak for you and the wine presser forgot him 
and extended his hardship by two years. But God remembered him and the man said, I remember my wrong this day. Whoever must remember this night. Like King Ahasuerus, let a book of remembrance be opened for you tonight. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. Please help me with the request. Please. The Bible, can you just turn it? We'll put it back. This is a mystery that the Lord opened my eyes to see in scripture. There was a time, you can have the fan even if it's just for five minutes, you earn it back. There was a time three kings came to fight a king in the Bible. And they wrote a threat letter, sir, pastor. And then the man brought the threat letter before God and laid it on the temple and said, God, see it. Someone is trying to be you. If you are comfortable with that man, then leave it there. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Let me tell you this. For those of you who have followed our ministry this is a deep mystery the testimonies that have come is not a ritual it's a personal dealing from god but with a grace and a covenant that backs it i may not be able to prophesy to everyone this night i may not be able to do all these things our time has gone immediately after the prayer i don't even know if we may be able to pray for the sick we may just do the impartation finally and then we are done but listen to me, let me tell you, this is a representation of your pain. This is a representation of your frustration. This is what is eating your time and you are reporting it to God. Father, this is what is trying to take your place in my life. Every time I desire to love you, here it comes. The Bible says what God has joined. You were joined to Christ and a stranger is trying to put us under. You are reporting a foreigner to God. What then shall separate us from the love of God? The worries and the cares. The school fees and the bills. The health issues and the death sentences. will turn your life around. Just, I want you to pray where you are in one minute as I cry unto God over this request. Thank you. Wherever you are, you just pray. I will pray in one minute and then we are done. the spirit these Egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever you will see them no more forever
Aleluya. I desire to come to you again that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that he may be established. Please listen. You can go ahead and own the fan. Please help me. You can pack it back. No man anoint himself. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, one of the things that happened in that encounter was the light from him. There was such light that came into me. And then, in one of the encounters, the Lord said something very strange. He said, my son, I give you my presence as a gift. Now, I didn't understand that. Then I saw an angel of the Lord standing. And he said, that this angel will walk with you. And he's called the angel of the Lord's presence. And I said, is the angel of the Lord's presence not God himself? But I saw that angel. And the Lord spoke to me. That everywhere I travel to. I have an assignment. That the light that came from him to me. There must be somebody in that meeting. That that light must be released upon. Please hear me. This revelation will turn you. I'm seeing oil coming on your head. Take that place now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That oil will turn ordinary people. Ordinary. Some of you are in ministry. You have struggled. You have done your best. This thing is not by trying. If it's not there, it is not there. Some of us are in business. Some of us are in different levels, whatever it is. I want to pray for you right now. Please, those under the anointing and those outside, you don't have to bring anybody up. There's no space. Just help someone there. But please let your heart be open to receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, this five minutes for this impartation, I promise you and we're done. The healing anointing. There are people here who must carry that grace. Right now from the left to the right. From inside and outside. Like it was in the days of our fathers. Let there be an impartation right now. Right now, right now, right now. Receive the healing anointing. There are people that must drink of this grace. I activate it by the spirit. Please help them. I activate it now by the spirit. Miracles, signs, wonders. There is a grace for psalmistry. You can write songs, but you can receive songs. Miriam, as a prophetess, received a song. A song that was recommended even in Revelation. That we will sing the songs of Miriam. There are songs that don't die with time. They come from the realm of eternity. I pray for all those called into the worship ministry. I know that you have suffered a lot because you are standing for Christ. From heaven, let a Davidic order of grace for psalmistry rest upon you now. Songs from the Spirit. You will hear them in the night as you sleep. In the name of Jesus, melodies of revival songs of warfare battle cries in the spirit bring those songs from the throne I pray for all those who are called into the prophetic I don't know what is stopping you from entering that dimension but right now I'm seeing like a boiling pot in the spirit help this lady I stand by the spirit and at the count of three I'm seeing mantles ancient mantles of the prophetic one 
two, three, take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. The eyes that can see, help that woman please. The ears that can hear, the eyes that can see, and the ears that can hear. Hallelujah. I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the screens. The book must be opened and the seals. If the seven seals are not open, your eyes cannot see. You can read your Bible. Isaiah 29 11, the vision of all is become as unto a book that is sealed that they gave one who is learned and he said i cannot because he's sealed they gave one who is unlearned and he said i cannot because i'm unlearned listen hear me i want to impart upon you the spirit of revelation the grace that calls man into the fellowship of this mystery For no man was worthy to open the book and unlock his seals. And the elder tapped me and said, Weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. And then I saw and looked upon the throne. And I no longer saw a lion, but I saw a lamb as though had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. Every eye had a horn that backed it. Listen, the spirit of revelation has authority behind it. For every dimension, there is a horn allocated for an eye. When you have one eye, you have one horn. It was seven horns and seven eyes. There is an eye that can see that corresponds to the authority you carry. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 amplified arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light in the name that is above all names I stretch my hands to you and I declare understanding and insight into scripture access to the mysteries Receive it now. Receive, help that lady, my God. Receive it now. Insight. In the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, may the secrets of the Lord rest upon your tabernacle. May the secrets, the mysteries of the kingdom rest upon your tabernacle. Hallelujah. Now I want to impart upon you a grace that you, you will rarely hear being imparted. It's called the spirit of might. If you fail in the day of battle, it is because your strength is small. The source of my strength the strength of my life now you my hope and my joy my confidence the source of my strength the strength of my life strengthened with might in the inner man capacity I pray for you many of you have gone through a lot we live in a world today where there are challenges and you need to be strong. You can lose a loved one. You need to be strong. The word of God takes time to manifest. You need the spirit of might. The endurance and the stamina to wait. All the days of my appointed time, he said, I will wait. May that grace, that it, the staying power, 
receive it right now in the name of Jesus finally I pray particularly for the members of this church for being the platform for which the Lord has so lavishly invested his light and his spirit in this conference the Bible says a worker is deserving of his wages I pray for you that the allocation from the spirit for you as a worker not just as an attendant step into it in Jesus name I have to stop here but let me assure you that your life will change in a way that will surprise you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye